Cleaning the facade is a very common treatment. Once restored, a clean facade can add massive value both aesthetically and financially. However, cleaning is a major interaction and must be undertaken with great care. It could be purely cosmetic, maintenance related, having defined a real need to protect the building, part of a redevelopment, part of a funding project or as a result of listed building funding or requirements to maintain and improve the condition of the building. If the wrong approach is undertaken such as high pressure or abrasive blasting or incorrect chemical applications are used in the cleaning program, it can destroy the equilibrium of the stone and the environment in which it sits. You generally only have one chance to restore a facade. Using incorrect methods can destroy soft weathered masonry and historic coatings lose historic elements of the building that contribute to its unique character. You can increase the rates of weathering, erosion, decay and salt flow. Essentially, you can achieve completely opposite to what you initially set out to achieve. Don't use any abrasive methods or cleaning acids as part of a scheme unless they are fully controlled. Abrasive generally means high speed, low cost, but with the risk of damage. There are big issues and risks with overcleaning, pushing the masonry too hard beyond what is considered a restored facade. It's worth remembering that 95% of the damage is caused generally in the last 5% of a project. Of course, different materials will react differently to different methods of cleaning. Sandstone, for example, presents more difficulties to clean than limestone, which generally means a number of different methods are required to clean and remove any one material. The cleaning methodology must also be selected to match the facade soiling or pollution type. A one-size-fits-all approach is generally bad for the masonry's long-term performance and condition. If some form of chemical is required to help loosen particularly stubborn pollutants, always ensure that other options are explored first and what the likely results would be. Consider that stone, such as limestone, sandstone and marble, are highly affected by acids, so it's essential to avoid further damage by neutralising and fully rinsing and removing the chemical from the facade. If you are using a chemical, a pH surface indicator strip should be used to check the pH of the surface once cleaned. However, the safest thing to do is to remove the need for chemical cleaning through a different methodology. Air abrasion methods such as sandblasting should really only be used on tenacious hard surface soiling. Dry methods of cleaning can often result in overcleaning, micro fracturing of the substrate and increased rates of weathering on the stone plus inconsistencies in the final result. At a first glance, the results look great, the facade will be clean, but on closer inspection, the masonry pores will have been opened and the surface roughened. If the soiling is particularly hard and solid, then there should be a business case to use a dry abrasive cleaning method as part of an overall scheme or project, but only in isolated locations. I'd advise before undertaking the facade cleaning project that you think about what you want to achieve from the cleaning as this will help you define the methods that you use and build greater value around the approach. Or better still, request a test sample from your service provider. Remember, as a rule, it's important to match the cleaning method to the facade soiling type. For example, steam for soft flexible matter, soft abrasive cleaning methods for hard sulfation. Speak to your service provider before undertaking the project and evaluate where shadowing may remain. Ask questions and discuss items such as, um, are you going to use a different method to sensitively clean the heavily soiled areas? How are you planning to treat heavy carbon sulfation, iron ore leaching or copper staining? Look for spooled bricks or weak sections of sandstone and discuss the approach to these cleaning methods. And discuss what you want your facade to look like. Don't commoditise the process of facade cleaning. Working with older buildings is complex. Remember, the idea is to lift and restore the building while minimising any damage to the natural patina of the masonry. Ultimately, a sensitive approach to restoring a building takes longer due to the need to undertake more phases and inspections throughout the process, but the results will be aligned more closely with your vision. The key to mitigating the risk of overcleaning, such as damage, poor results, increased weathering and future repairs, is to undertake cleaning test trials. Cleaning test trials are an excellent pre-project investment. You can identify weaknesses and responses from the masonry when under pressure from a particular cleaning method. You can achieve clarity on programme including the cost structure and the variety of methods required to achieve a sympathetic restoration solution. Results can often be approved by a conservation officer and methods adjusted to meet a variety of listed, safety, uh, client driven requirements. You'll be able to review the end result before undertaking the project. Testing creates transparency and openness for all. 
The test should be documented and should include photos of the building before and after and during the procedure, as well as describing the methods, number of passes, pressures and temperatures, all required to achieve the desired end outcome. Ultimately, at the end of the trials, you'll have an accurate specification for the cleaning works and an agreed methodology. In simple terms, the water acts as a light mechanical process which gently loosens and removes the soiling whilst the steam helps to break down the pollutants, organic matter and carbon sulfation to provide the clean. Together, they're an excellent and highly effective sensitive stone and facade cleaning solution. This method can be highly controlled and the number of passes of cleaning built up and repeated to sensitively clean and restore a building facade. The steam is generated from a specialist unit which houses a mobile boiler that takes cold water under pressure and turns it into hot water and emits steam. The boilers are specifically designed to work at a very low flow rate which allows the water to heat up as it passes through the nozzle of the gun. The flow rate of water coming out of the nozzle is key. Many pressurising systems will say they produce steam but have a high flow rate, so they still use high pressure. We generally work with 4 litres a minute, whilst many units will work with a minimum of 10 to 12, which usually generates too much high pressure when cleaning and restoring a masonry facade. It's much better for a building surface to use low pressure and increase the number of passes of cleaning to sensitively restore the facade in a controlled and methodical manner. We use a 40 degree nozzle to provide a smooth and clean cleaning solution to the stone or brick or the substrate that we're working with. We then generally combine steam cleaning with a range of latex, poultice or other facade cleaning gels to clean, restore and preserve a building facade, phasing the works, inspecting and adjusting along the journey. Any other methods sit around this approach and are generally used in isolated areas to deal with stubborn staining. <laughs>